In 1960, the railway roundabout cameras were focused on one of British Railway's most anachronistic branch lines, that from Axminster from East Devon to Lyme Regis. Axminster was on the main line from Waterloo to Salisbury and Exeter. The main line southern trains called at the station to make connections with the coastal branch. Famous trains such as the Atlantic Coast Express called here and even detached through coaches for the Lyme branch. The branch was anachronistic because it sported a trio of locomotives that were amongst the oldest working engines in Great Britain, the Adams Radial Tanks. These three engines were celebrities in the early 1960s because despite modernization of many rural branches with diesel multiple units, they defied all attempts to break their monopoly of the Lyme Regis branch. As number 30583, the middle one of the trio, runs round its train, another express from Waterloo calls at the station. As with the up train seen earlier, this is headed by one of the southern region's rebuilt Merchant Navy class Pacific's Cunard White Star, which had been rebuilt two years earlier. Its original outline is illustrated by the next up train arriving behind a West Country Pacific. The radial's monopoly of the Lyme Regis branch had come about because of the flexibility of their wheelbase. They were 442 tanks with a longer than usual throw on the leading and trailing wheels. They were also very light engines spreading their weight over five axles rather than the three common to most light tank engines. The locomotive seen here had a curious history. Built in 1885 as one of a class of 71 locomotives for use on the London suburban services of the London and South Western Railway. It was sold as surplus to requirements during the First World War and was later bought by the East Kent Railway, an impecunious concern that was part of the Colonel Stevens Light Railway Empire. It was laid aside there just before the Second World War. Meanwhile, all but two of the remainder of the class had been sold or scrapped by the beginning of 1928, these two being retained for use on the Lyme Regis branch. They survived all attempts to replace them, but after the Second World War, both needed heavy repairs. This emphasized the lack of any emergency cover, and as the East Kent engine still survived in a derelict condition, it was purchased by the Southern and refurbished, becoming British Railways number 30583. And so it was that Pat Whitehouse and John Adams came to film this extraordinary locomotive kept in magnificent condition after a recent overhaul. The Lyme Regis branch swept over the main line on a flyover and headed for the coast. It had been built at the turn of the century and opened in 1903. Built under the provisions of a light railway order, it had severe curves and gradients. It twisted and turned to take advantage of the lie of the land. And this is what accounted for the survival of the Adams tanks. There was one intermediate station, a halt at Compine, which boasted a camping coach. All around the station site can be seen evidence of civil engineers' work as the summer of 1960 saw extensive track renewals on the branch. Although few people realized it, this was the Adams tank's ultimate downfall. At the end of the summer, an Ivert tank was tried on the branch and proved satisfactory. By July 1961, all the Adams engines were withdrawn. Beyond Compine, the line continued to twist and turn, and then crossed a valley on the ten-arch Cannington Viaduct, built of concrete in 1900. One arch of this had quickly required reinforcement by a jack arch, which ruined its appearance, but the structure survives today. Concrete was used extensively by the London and South Western Railway, and concrete supports were used for a slippery cutting side, as well as concrete station name boards, platform edgings, plate layers huts, lamp standards, amongst many other things. These were manufactured at the railway's plant at Exeter. As the train arrives at Lyme Regis, it can be seen that the single coach which forms the train bears the number 108 on the end. This was its set number. The southern region and its forebears kept its carriages in fixed formation rates of up to 10 coaches and allocated them to specific services. These were given set numbers and this system even applied to single coaches, where the requirements of the service only required one coach. Mm -hmm. 
Despite its use of push-pull services on many branches, the Southern never fitted the Lime Regis engines with the equipment, and all trains ran round. On summer Saturdays, through trains ran from Waterloo, requiring two of the Adams tanks double heading. Number 30583's tenacity continued after withdrawal, and she still works today on the Bluebell Railway. <laughs>